Welcome on back everyone. We are waking up to the dulcet tones of the merchant drinking some potions. Off screen I've been flattening off the nearby area and chopping down a bunch of trees. Been burning the logs down into charcoal and obviously used a lot of it for various buildings. I set up the foundation for a base over the crater, built a bridge over this ravine or canyon. And I built a little temporary house here while I work on stuff on this side. Now taking all of the elderberries that fall off the trees, you can combine that with sugar in a pot and then combine the resulting jam with some toast, which is just bread in the furnace, and you can make jelly toast. And it is surprisingly filling. It fills a whole bar pretty much, so... That's some real easy food to keep on hand. Now I've set up some groundwork for a farm over here. To get these uh, logs, they kind of look like the, the logs you get from chopping the tree, but if you take four of those logs like this, you get three wood, which looks honestly pretty much the exact same, just without the uh, tops and bottoms of the log texture. But I have... There's, there's just so many trees here that I can afford, you know, losing out on some potential building material. I made sure to set up a permanent water source here. You put two, or a two, two by two like that, and they just keep regenerating water. And I want to move all the sugar cane I have over there to over here. And we'll, I want to have the sugarcane one level down from the rest of the farmland. And of course you need to have sugarcane on the same water level, or have the water on the same Y level. So we'll just go ahead and do this. And I do gotta say, uh, something that'll be a consistent issue in this video is... Me trying to swap buckets around from filled buckets to empty buckets and the game will just automatically swap out the items into my hotbar. It's kind of annoying. And there we go. Perfect. I imagine those who have you or who knows what mods are in this mod pack can probably tell what I'm planning to do here. And I've grabbed a handful of seeds from all the grass that's been getting broken down as I've been flattening the land, so we'll just go ahead and plant just a little bit of everything. Namely, these Inferium seeds. Which is kind of why I want to do a farm first, because... As the quest book says, it's never too early to start farming or growing Inferium. And I noticed that the farmland up top isn't getting watered, so we'll just splash some water there and it should start getting wet again. There is a thing with farming I've read where if you have the same crop, like fully surrounding a crop, it'll grow slower. So you're just better off having rows of individual crops. And then in these uh, Arkwood forests are the sourceberry trees. Annoyingly, they damage you if you step on them, so watch out for that. And I'll just plop some of those right here. They're needed for some different magic stuff, so always good to have a few on hand growing. And now I'm just going to put down as much, you know, hoe up a whole bunch of farmland just so I can see, like, how far the water reaches. Annoyingly, you can't make doors out of these woods and the arc wood doors are just boring old gray but there is a reason why I'm sticking with arc wood as my choice of building material so 
set a few fires, and continue building. So as you can tell why the fire not spreading, arc wood is flame proof. So it's a very useful building material because way too many times I've had issues with burning down my houses. And now that I got some crops growing, let's move on to the next thing I want to start working on, and that is Botania stuff. All around the world, we find these different types of mystical flowers, and you can break the flowers up into petals, which are used in all kinds of Botania things. And what's nice is that you also get some flowers for doing the, or not flowers, but like petals for doing the different quest in here. Next up, using that pedestal, we can create things, obviously different types of flowers. And you need to generate mana for this. And the best way, in my opinion, at the start is making endo flames. There is another kind of flower, starter flower. It's the Hydrogenias. And eh, the issue with those is that the flowers will eventually need to be replaced, I believe. And I'd prefer the kind of build once and forget about it thing you can do with the, the endo flames. Now to make the flowers, you got to put some water in the petal still here, and then you need to put in a combination of different petals. Whoops, a little too much there. And my inventory issue. <laughs> So we'll just go ahead and cut to that. Once you get in enough of the petals, you throw in the seed and you get your flower. And what we can do, uh, the main way to get more of the different Botania flowers is that you can plant a petal in the ground and then bone meal it to get a tall flower. Next up, we we're gonna want to get make a uh, here, Daisy, I believe. And I'm going to want to make two of those. And then we'll want to space them uh, four blocks apart. And what you'll need is actual stone, not cobblestone. So let's get this furnace set up. I should have some stone somewhere though. But just three, eh. Let's go with the logs instead. So what these flowers do is either for stone or for logs, it'll turn them into living versions of that material, which is kind of the building blocks of this mod pack. Just got to give it some time, so just double check on our living stone, plant whatever extra petals I have left. And I'm not sure if the arc wood logs would work on this. That's why I'm growing a bunch of jungle wood because arc wood doesn't work for a lot of things, annoyingly enough. And there we go. After a few minutes, it turns into living logs. And using Ultimine just to get everything all at once is so amazing. And 
and the quest reward system absolutely spoils me by giving me a, a two extra flowers instead of just one extra flower. Really start getting a whole bunch of these things going all at once. Just to explain the uh, the log I have set over there, you can, as I've pointed out before, you can grow more of the different arcwood uh, fruits, I guess, on their logs. So I just have some mendo scenes going on, mostly to fill in the nearby composter, so I can get some extra bone meal. And then I heard the song and kind of freaked out. I thought one of those like harder mobs spawn near me but I'm guessing there's a cavern system like right below the ground here and I may as well explain the elephant in the room I have music off because Minecraft music was you know nice to vibe to 13 years ago when I first bought this game now I'm kind of annoyed by it And I have thought about putting different, uh, like, lo-fi beats in the background, because that's what everyone does. But then I realized that for these mi videos that become 40 minutes, my options are to either have one song I loop for the whole 40-minute period, or I have to find 10 to 12 different types of songs, and then have to credit all of them, so we'll just do without... <laughs> But now that I got the living rocks, we can make a mana pool. And then we'll also need to use, or uh, get living wood to make, to be able to bind the flower. Well, actually, before we even do that, we need to make a mana spreader. And to do that, we need the living wood. Now, for to make a rod, we just need sticks and a, a petal. And depending on what color of petal we use, it determines the color of the rod. I want to go with a red one. to head on back to base real quick to grab myself that golden ingot also need another petal for the spreader and we have the least amount of yellow or yellow is the least amount of petals we've got so let's we'll go ahead and use one of those And I prefer to have my mana spreader kind of elevated, so just throw down a few dirt blocks, throw this up there. Then we have to shift and right click to bind things, so get the endoflame 
linked to the spreader, and then the spreader linked to the mana pool. And then you just simply throw any combustible material at the flower, and it'll burn it and start generating mana. Now, uh, unlike the hyd Hydrogianas, hyd I know it's supposed to be a pun on Hydrangeas, but there's an N somewhere in that word that they use. The endoflames don't like expire and need replacing, so it's just way easier to automate delivering fuel to them. I guess the whole like hydrangeas rotting thing is meant to be like a balancing act if you were not using a whole bunch of different automated mods. I I'm not sure. Uh, a whole bunch of the alternate mana generating flowers are kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. So I'll probably be using a whole lot of Vando Flames. There's one thing I've learned playing video games is... I would much rather deal with the easiest thing and then just produce more of it... ...than deal with whatever downside the more advanced version has. So now, uh, not fully automated, but we do have mana going through. I'm just, every now and then I need to make sure to run on over and throw some blocks of charcoal at it. But now, we're going to move on to a different source of magic, that is source in uh, the Rs mod. To make that, we need to get some source gems. To make a source gems, we need to have the imbuement chamber, and then start throwing either lapis or amethyst into the chamber. <sighs> And uh, all these things, I believe, need the arc wood, so another good reason to be at one of these forests. Then again, arc wood is honestly not too rare outside of these forests. Um, like, pretty much every biome will have one or two of an arc wood tree, and they drop a whole bunch of saplings. So after some time, there we go, we got ourselves a source gem. May as well do a few other things in the quest book for here. Like getting the spell book. And to get that we need to have an iron sword, axe, pickaxe, and I believe shovel. Now I found an iron sword on a random chest. So let's need to make iron versions of the other items. And what does, what is nice though is that in the main quest version, or the main quest of the quest book, also requires getting some of those iron tools, which I would never, which I'm not using since I'm using, you know, silent gear, bronze and brass stuff. So it's a good way to check off, check mark off that quest. Now I just need a book to combine them all with. Now we can start making some magic. The War Notebook, by the by, is completely pointless once you have a quest book because you can access the documentation off the book. You start with a few glyphs, but nothing too impressive. We'll worry about the uh, spell making a little bit later. I guess you could replace a pick using the break spell, but then you're relying on your mana regeneration to mine instead of the durability of a pick. As this shows off here, different things you can do with the chamber. And you also get different kinds of rewards. I was hoping for some extra source gems from that random thing, and it looks like I got it, so that's always a win. Next up, we'll need to make source jars that to actually hold the source that gets generated by the various source links. 
thought I had some glass over here, but it turns out, nope, I got it at the other place. That's what happens when you have one place where it's like, yes, I plan on building here in the future, and then another place where I am building right now, so the resources just kind of split. So want to place the jars right here near the farmland. I need some wheat to make an Argonomic source link. Agronomic. And what this does is generate source off of plants growing. Then I kind of think, uh, maybe this is a little bit too far, so... And, oh, nope, it wasn't far at all, but whatever. I decide I'm going to move it. So now we have crops growing, we've got mana generation for Botania, and we have source coming in for the R's magic. And I believe source berries generate more source like, it contributes more source for uh, each tick, for lack of a better word. But now, I believe, I will be working on actually getting that farm automated. Because me having to run on over and harvest to keep things going will be a kind of a pain. And hey, the quest gave me a second jar, so just toss that down. And make some extra coal for the mana spreader while I'm at it. Because yeah, it seems all the blocks are used up. And we'll just throw the rest of the charcoal to whatever. I don't think blocks actually contribute more mana but that may just be me thinking of uh, something else where blocks generate more than the sum of the coal that you use to make a block but all right time for that uh, automation let's step on over to create by accepting this quest here we get the wrench so that's very nice and we're going to want to make a handful of andesite alloys. And that requires andesite and chunks of either iron or zinc. I go with zinc because there's more zinc than... Well, at least I find zinc more often than I find iron. And turns out I haven't really been uh, collecting much andesite. So I'll go ahead and do a quick run for some more. Now it's time to start working on everything here. We'll need to make shafts and cogwheels. Thankfully, doing these quests like provides extras of those materials, which is always good. Usually, at least. But getting free wheel cogwheels and large cogwheels is very good. And it seems this mod pack makes creating these way easier. Just a simple block and and a, and a shaft. And then to upgrade to a bigger one, it's just another block and the cogwheel itself. I swear I've had to deal with, like, you would have to, like, do an 8x8 of cogwheels. And then a block to make it, to make it into a bigger cogwheel. Thank god that's gone. And then we'll finally need something to power all this equipment, and that's what water wheels are for. Now I'm trying to find a particular item here in the quest book, and I don't think it's actually in here, which is strange because it is a very useful piece of equipment. But now, 
we need to make some andesite casings. To make that, you just throw down a log and then strip it. And then slap some alloys on it. And of course, the arc woods don't work. So that's frustrating. And thankfully, you can ulta mine <laughs> stripping logs. And there we go. Gonna need a lot of casing, so let's just encase them all. Unfortunately, you cannot ulta mine using the uh, wrench. If you shift right click on create stuff, it'll automatically deconstruct the thing you're looking at. Once again, I'm trying to find a certain something, not really finding it. Though I think, I think I see it now, but whatever. We'll worry about that when we get to that. For now, however, we're going to want to make a mechanical press to uh, make plates of metal because that's what we need to make these things, these harvesters. And we'll also need a depot, of course. That's what lets us place an item down to be processed by whatever create thing you got going on. And then to make a crusher, we need to get a full block of iron. So run back to base, grab all of my iron. Realize that I didn't have the iron at base. I had the iron over here. Now we'll want to place this over the depot. So we'll just throw down a block. Not like that. Shift click. Don't want the press face in this way. Having some trouble trying to rotate it. Nothing ever wants to be placed the correct way the first time around. And then we're going to want to set up something to contain the water as it goes, you know, because if you don't block one side of the water wheel, the water will go on both sides and the water wheel won't work. There we go. We have power. Now we need to make a few iron plates. Just slap those on. And here we go. That first one is always so satisfying. So we're just going to need to wait for a bit to get the harvesters created. You can speed it up, but I'm in no rush right now. I'm still trying to find that item. <laughs> but there is something we're going to need that I briefly moused over. Alright, and this is the item I've been trying to find. Very simple. A shaft, a, a plank, or a slab, and a casing. Decide I want to get a little fancy here. Yeah, so this is going to take care of all my issues with, say, getting hit by those uh, 
the different crops that damage you when you walk over them. Got a mine under here. Throw down that bearing. I want wood instead of dirt for my harvester. Now, while the bearing will connect to the first block placed on top of it, the other blocks don't get uh, attached. So that's going to be an issue. But before we worry about all that, we need to get underneath all of this. So I built a little access tunnel out here. Now I see to actually find where the thing's at. Alright, now we just need to get a water mill down here. And just break this block up here to get some water going. Oh, this one's not going to work. Let's do it on this side. And there we go. Things are rotating. And it's going to make it stop. You have to have your hand empty and right click on it. Now that we've got this going we got our plates here but we need super glue to actually get everything attached to make that we need latex or slime or something and we can create slime but to do that we need to make dough which requires setting up a grinder as well as a washer which means using more create stuff and uh, I kind of want to hold off on that but, I notice, hey, we can burn jellyfish into slime. So just something real uh, short term, while I was sailing around trying to find some jellyfish, I spot this little guy on an island. What you'll want to do is approach them with a gold nugget. That's why I've keep, been keeping some on my person. Throw it at them. And there we go. This is another critical part to the automation here. So I, whenever I see them, I make sure to throw. A, I'll be making sure to throw a gold nugget at them to get more. Now, after finally finding some jellyfish, a lot rarer than I was expecting, <laughs> we can get to work on this. And we'll need to build up the harvesters. And now we'll want to keep the super glue on the offhand. But just to make sure I don't accidentally use it. We'll just take it off real quick. Also, instead of using regular planks, I decided to use the yellow arc wood. Just for color variety. And this is the reason why I'm, uh... Why I... I part of the reason why I made that thing with the, uh sugarcane is that whenever the harvester has to stop it places the blocks down which ruins the farmland so I'll have to regrow stuff and it'd just be better if I were to have it stop over the water because then the stuff is below the harvest the harvester blocks also with inferium you can throw it down on the land and it becomes inferium farmland and when you use it to when you grow inferium crops on it, or mystical agriculture crops, 
Oh god damn, it's going the wrong way. Ugh. But yeah, you'll see there's a secondary chance, and that usually is stuff like uh, seeds. And every... To make an Inferium seed, you need to have eight Inferium, so every seed you earn is eight Inferium saved. And I'm having some real issues trying to get this thing to stop. So let's just jump on in. I think I have this set up right, and... God damn it. All that work I just did, throwing down Inferium farmland, just went to waste. So to get everything spinning the correct way... Just need to get the water on this side. There we go. Sounds like everything's working. Beautiful. Now, uh, and then continuing on the whole having the harvester stop thing. That's why I'm not using a create terminal where it will automatically stop every time it passes it and deposit all of its stuff. I got uh, something else in mind for har for collecting all the harvest here. And I'm noticing that the harvester can't reach some spots, unfortunately. So we'll just knock out the farmland and do something else with it. Probably won't reach this far either. I'll probably, yeah, stick with the growing watermelons on those edges just so the watermelon can, you know, grow on the plot that's not farmland. Now, as for actually collecting the produce, well, that Starbuckle sh uh, shard I found will be quite useful. Now, I've horrifically misunderstood something. We'll see my mistake here in a second, but I needed to get diamonds to make this thing. We also need source blocks, which is created by encasing a source stone with eight, or a source gem with eight stone blocks and then what we'll want to make is a enchanting apparatus which requires the diamond now here's my mistake I thought the enchanting apparatus I thought you needed a one of each of those. So, uh, rip my diamonds, I guess. Yeah, um, takes me a few seconds to realize what I just did. And it's at this point when I had a little scream internally. Yep, I was supposed to build pedestals, not additional apparatuses, so... After desperately alt f 4ing and hoping maybe I could reload from before I wasted all my diamonds, well, that didn't work out too well. I guess I have some spare apparatuses for when I need them. But there is still something else I need to make before being able to actually do this. I need an arcane core, so another cut as I find the materials. And 
There we go. One of the items I enjoy the most here from uh, this mod. To get any use from it though, we're going to need to make a Dominion Wand here. And yes, the positioning of the enchanting tables do actually matter. Though I'm kind of surprised they work here, considering I'm one block further south than I should be. And I should note at this point, the pants and shoes I've had that increased my walk, my uh, walking speed so much, and also gave me a plus one to step height, broke. But hey, now we got this guy here. Uh, without sneaking, you right click him, and then you do right click and sneak and right click, and there we go. He's now going to go off and throw everything that drops in this area into the chest. So it works out perfectly, and as I grow more crops and probably need more muscle here, I can just drop another Starbuncle down. So we now have pretty much auto-harvesting, auto-collecting. The source links will keep generating source. Also in the distance, you can see I set up a little farm area to keep animals in. Wasn't exactly exciting. But yeah, so that's that's uh that's it. Next time I'll be doing things a little more on the tech side, so see you then.